Welcome in. Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. We've got two very cute chihuahuas. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, this adorable, adorable pups. One short hair, one long hair. Long hair is white and has uh, pink on its head. What? Pink? Why? Well, lipstick. TV anchor. Got a little too kissy with the uh, puppy there. And uh, really, really cute, though, here. Ron Salzer, and I'm Jake Abram with um, Positive Petland Show. I'm here to talk about chihuahuas with Ron, and I'm excited to talk about pets. It's always fun. We do this show each week. If you haven't caught it before, it's Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock hour or anytime you want on our podcast page at kxic.com. You can listen in whenever you'd like. So it's on, on demand. Whenever you'd like to listen, you can do that. So listen in at kxic.com on the podcast page. YouTube, you can see the pups. As I mentioned, just type in Petland Radio or Positive Petland Show and it'll pop up. You can watch some old shows if you want to see. We feature a different breed every week. We have different topics to steer the show. Some good tips. And the Chihuahua is making his way across the the, uh, the board here. Come here, little guy. Bowl. <laughs> yeah, he's walking across. Come here. You're gonna turn off the radio. You're gonna turn off what's on what's on the radio here, because um, while we broadcast this, we have the other you know our satellite on. So I gotta make sure I gotta make sure you don't turn off the radio. So we have silence. Okay. Can you hang with me? All right. We're gonna have you hang with me again. I think this is my buddy. Ever since uh, this little guy came out, it's the short-haired brown Chihuahua. And he is such a snuggler. I'm holding him with simply with one hand very easily. And he just likes to snuggle up and go to sleep. So I think I'm going to hold him for part of the show here. Ron, how are you doing today? Doing very good. How could you not be doing good with two little beauties like this? Huh? Right. And at this moment, the Cubs are in it to yeah, win Yeah, right? No, PBS. Yeah, that's a good point because it's Sunday when a lot of people are hearing this right now. So they've played two games since we've last talked. Are they up 3-1? Are they ready to win the World Series tonight? Oh. Or... Are they down 3 1 and they're facing elimination? Or who knows, somewhere in between, did they split? Now it's 2 2, and it could be any that number of scenarios. But uh, good, good cross promotion there. So thanks for mentioning that. Cubs baseball, if you're listening on Sunday, tonight on KXIC. So uh, we've got the Chihuahuas. We're not going to talk about this as our breed, though. We've got different breed. Right. We have the poodle that we are going to review. So we're going to review the poodle. Okay. Our topic of the day is going to be how can we engage our canines in this wonderful autumn time? And so we'll just have some ideas and have a nice little discussion of that. Oh, that would be fun to do with my dog at home. Good. Yeah, a good time for dog walkers out there, too. It's nice and a little cool out there, but good time to be out and about. And then we're going to review the dog and cat food named Nutrisource. And is this a, a good dog food for your dog or cat? Uh, it's a somewhat local, made up in the Minnesota area by a family up there. And it's uh, gained quite the popularity up there and is slowly but surely gaining popularity down here as well. So it's, it's a really interesting food. We'll review that. What's well. the name of it again? Nutrisource. Nutrisource. And they have a lot of different flavors and stuff. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever heard of that one before maybe we've talked about it but yeah nutrisource mm -hmm. i like the midwest tie you know yeah uh, a little, little economy helper there no you're you're buying local at petland here in iowa city and you're buying product that's made in the midwest mm -hmm. so good stuff all right it's the amazing pet story of the week big voice guy oh he is wearing an indian's cap oh why he's and he's got a goat head he in his hand he, he, oh, he's getting beaten up <laughs> <laughs> he ran quickly out of the studio because there's some Cub fans with pitchforks outside, I think. <laughs> All right, good job. We appreciate a big voice guy, and you better be wearing a different cap next time you come around. It is the Amazing Pet Story of the Week. In this the story coming from Philadelphia, a hero dog has saved his owner from a house fire by protecting the woman from flames. Look at the dog, though. He's got uh, he's a little singed up. He's got a bandage on his nose, and mm. he's he's hurting there. Yeah. But uh, he helps save a woman's life, and so a pretty impressive story here from Philadelphia. The dog's name Chi. Uh, it's always hard to just guess what kind of dog it is. It looks like some sort of mixed breed there. Long longer hair, maybe some sort of lab in there. Um, but either way, um, they were called. The Philadelphia Fire Department called. And this just happened this past week here, too. And they say that the when they arrived on scene, the neighbors were alerted that the dog, she, was barking. 
uh, neighbors said it was unusual for the dog to be barking at that time. So that's why they went to investigate. Normally, the dog doesn't bark around that time. They said that she, the hero fire dog, got a surprise visit from one of the firefighters who was there to help save them. And he's become a little hero there because he helps everybody about the dog. Uh, he's been on oxygen and is expected to be okay, but uh, if it weren't for that alert dog, they, it was barking at a time it normally wouldn't. They may not have investigated and found that fire early enough or quick enough and they saved a woman's life. So that's your amazing pet story of the week from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Chi, the latest hero dog to tell you about. Coming up here, it is the second part of the show here on 800 KXIC, the Positively Petland Show. And as we go to break, Ron, tell us about your store. We're Petland of Iowa City, the, known for our puppies for sure. Uh, coming in and playing with those and the cats and the bunnies and the hamsters and the guinea pigs and the reptiles and the just keep on going. We've got uh, so we have a lot of fun. It's always our goal is to always find out what's the right pet for your family and then let's meet the needs of both so that you have a really good experience. Uh, we do the five dollar nail trim, which you can't beat. A five dollar nail trim. Oh, you can. Uh, and then we have the buy ten get one free on all of our dog and cat food, which you can't beat that either. Uh, we go back to the manufacturer for those reimbursements, so that uh, it's not like we raise prices or anything to do it. We actually go back to them and say, "Hey, you owe us a bag of food. We gave it away free." And they're sometimes they go, "What'd you do that for?" <laughs> <laughs> so we say, "Yo, let's get, get working it on the deals." So. Good deal. So that's what Petland is known for. All right. That's Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. I'm Jake Aper. This is the Positively Petland Show. We'll be right back. What is that little creature? It's a little creature. Hey, Matt. Hi, guys. Have you met Ron before? I don't know. I've seen you. That's yeah, Matt. Sure. That's Ron Salzer. Matt. Matt that's Kenny. Kenny. What's your last name? Kenny. 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 This is my buddy. He's been hanging with me ever since he came out of the bus. Yeah, that's right. You are. I might end up bringing you home. <laughs> he doesn't say that often. In fact, it's the opposite of that usually. I know, but I've been talking more and more about it. She could use a cheer up too. There are anything. gloves on the counter. Those here. are mine. That's, that's why he. My son borrowed them at the. Oh, okay. Beauty. I'm like, yeah, it is not that cold no, out. No, he he brought brought them, he's bringing them back. Ooh, this is a Chihuahua too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long hair. Look at the That's lipstick on there. Yeah, is that what <laughs> yeah. got a hold of it or what? No. <laughs> uh, the anchor lady up on uh, Fox uh, and CBS uh, was was I think giving it a kiss. I was looking away at the time, and then all of a sudden she went, mm -hmm. "Oh no!" And we were just about to go on air. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> but that plays really well, so we. Oh yeah, that. sure. Great for TV. Thanks for bringing those back. Oh, I yeah, appreciate for that for sure. Them. It's hard to put them back down, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, soothing, you know. I love it's therapeutic this. about dogs. Mm -hmm. This is what I love about it. Is. It's therapeutic. It's yeah. they're, just, they're adorable. And I tell you what, my uh, one of my uh, Miles, who you met, mm -hmm. one of my twin boys. Um, hi. What does it smell like? <laughs> must smell good, huh? Um, when he was younger and his ADHD was really a problem. A dog around. Oh my god! He, oh, yeah. and I still, it. I still, still the dog. I still call him the dog whisperer. We have two dogs at home, and as soon as he walks in the house, and he's the guy that'll just walk in the door, literally plop down on the floor and let the dogs just lick oh, him wow. and kiss him. He just lets them do whatever I they want to do. Love that. And he and it calms him down. And he's not so bad anymore. But mm, when, he right. was, when he was in the middle school, especially, he was really struggling. And man, dogs were just. That's when we got the second one. Just so good for him. It's good. Yeah. Well, that's an energy. Like I've not, we have been experienced that in our family. Uh, but talking with the customers in the store, they tell me that. Well, yeah, I tell my kid to go run around the. Oh, I, I know how to handle this before they go to school. We get them running around the house a yeah. bunch of times, and then we send them on the bus, and Absolutely. they're a totally different child. Then, well, with that's a dog, right. chase the dog. Yeah. You know, I can hear that real yeah. quick. You know, they've got the energy for it. Yeah. So. That's great. Because I, I, that's the, one of my favorite things is to chase the dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm outside. I chase the dog the whole time. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, like, we, we play this whole, it can't, it can't go, you know, like I have my line or whatever, yeah. and you can't pass it, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. And I rarely can even get a swipe of hair. <laughs> that dog is so fast. <laughs> You're talking about Callie? Susie. Susie. Oh, Callie. No, Callie's slow. Oh, she's 
15 or whatever years old dachshund <laughs> she's like yeah pet me <laughs> that's about it right? yeah all right we got to get back here to this well nice to meet you yeah we'll right, see you guys. thanks all right in three thanks, two you. one well, then, yeah, on YouTube, that we are not going to hear on. Oh, that was good. On radio. That was handed, too. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show. If you caught that on YouTube, you caught a little extra there. You heard a story about how one of our salesmen here, uh, Matt, his son has ADHD, and <coughs> was very candid about how a dog helped him in a big way when he was in middle school because he would come home and just lay down on the ground and get all that energy out. And and you said, Ron, that you have some clients and some people who come by and say that they have their kids chase the dog out before they go to school and that helps get some energy out before Exactly, they go. yeah. Interesting. Um, it was it three or four weeks ago, we had a, a mom and her child in the store and he has autism and there was a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. He is, you know, I guess they call it functional and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, but she would, she clearly had some stresses with in her mind. And so we started talking to them. I said, Hey, you know, something that we do here is volunteering and watching puppies and her eyes lit up and she goes, can I do, can I have my son do that? Aww, and it, he is now in our stories. Well, I think this is the third week in a row where he comes in and uh, apparently he's like a different person around the, the oh oh if you've got no uh i think the little lipstick uh little chihuahua has been has, has gotten a bath by him you're gonna tell us the story no, no oh now mm -hmm. we're not gonna say now anything. you're gonna be quiet huh but yeah so we we have so many different so opportunities helps, and stories and he helps uh shampoo or, or yeah wash it yeah wash the puppies and nice. and that's great therapy for him he's you know he's here, these are 12 year olds on up that are working. They're learning working skills. There are not that many opportunities like when we were younger, or at least I was younger, there was opportunities where I could go work, I could go do things, mm -hmm. and get, in my case, get paid. Those have been eliminated quite a bit. And so it's, uh, I, it is a huge thing for our community to have those opportunities. Uh, yeah. yeah, right here. Yeah, the advocate. There's yeah. the Chihuahua is advocating for it. Yeah. He's sitting on Ron's lap. He probably wants down. Yeah, he well, he sees the other one down. And says, he, yeah, he, he sees the other one jumping around. So uh, anyway, that good good little segue there. I just wanted to talk a little about that. It's just another example of how dogs are part of our lives and uh, tied, intertwined into specific, specifically American society. And it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, people who own dogs and love their dogs, it's part of their family. And that's why, you know, we talk about sometimes how much it hurts when you when you end up losing them. It's like a family member. And uh, we we love talking about those dogs. And we know the bond that you have, listeners out there. If you're listening to this show, it's a show about pets. You probably love your dog out there if you're listening to this program. So let's talk about dogs. What about the poodle? That's our Breed of the Week. Right. Breed of the Week is the poodle. As of right now, we have a what would be classified. And this is interesting. So we're going to have a little discussion on what is a toy, toy breed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of very big misconceptions of wh what is that uh, as far as size goes. And so we'll learn about AKC, who defines the term what they meant by that term. Um, but we're gonna talk about the poodle. So we have a toy poodle in our store right now, as well as a standard poodle. So that's a rarity that, uh, that we have a standard in there. Not many people are looking for those. So if that's something that's on your mind and you, hey, you know, I haven't seen many standard poodles. Come on in, we have a beautiful standard poodle in our store right now. Um, so let's go into the history of the poodle. And I just read a little bit aloud here from the AKC. Uh, since since history documents the poodle in various parts of the world, there is some doubt, there is some doubt as to the land of its origin. Ooh, which makes good question for tree. tree. Where do you, where do you, uh, I, I always think of the French poodle. Yeah. Before, and whenever yeah. I think of a poodle, I always think of, I want to say France. So, well, let's, let's dive in. Dive in. The breed is supposed to have originated in Germany. Okay. Where it is known as Pudel, huh. well, and it's it's uh, spelled P-U-D-E-L, 
For years, it has been regarded as the national dog of France, where it was commonly used as a retriever and traveling trick or circus dog. Mm. In France, it was known as <laughs> this is one of those, you know, where you're you Ron, you're an engineer. Mm. Caniche. Caniche. C A N I C H E. Caniche. Which translates as duck dog. Duck <laughs> Wait, that didn't go. Who, is that, is that, that Yeah, <laughs> uh, the poodle, uh, the poodle's use as a water retriever is how his unique trim, although becoming more stylized over time, developed. Yeah, that's interesting. I know you've talked about that in the past. People think that there was it's all because of being pretty, but it, there's actually functionality to it. Yeah, that. and the, what they're the cut on the French poodle, right? What they're clarifying right there is, is it's been a little more pronounced now. When yeah. you get those really big poofs and stuff like that, that's just for show. So go, moving on on that topic, though, portions of the poodle's coat were clipped to help facilitate movement in swimming. There is a purpose to every sculpted form. For example, the mane to protect heart and lungs. Uh, the rosettes to protect kidneys. Wow, that detailed. Protecting that's, their kidneys. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the puffs to protect joints and the tail to propel the dog like a, a rudder. The coat is dense and curly, long enough to freeze on top and remain warm and dry near I, the skin in cold weather. And I uh, even read in the past where it's trimmed real uh, tight around the nose and that's to uh, go through the water more efficiently. And so- just, That makes sense. Yeah, interesting <laughs> to see, you know, hear where the cut comes from. Um, Although there are there are one breed poodles come okay so it's interesting uh, AKC classifies all poodles in one category but then they have that the club that sponsors the poodle then breaks out within their club mm -hmm. the toy and the standard so toy ten inches from the shoulder to floor so J D I thought toy was this like tiny three pound dog. That's what I think of, yeah. Yeah, but it's never been defined that way. It's something that we kind of have on our own. A 10 inch at the shoulder is not a three pound dog. No, that's, that's 20 pound, right? Or yeah, that's not, or so, no, like. no, not a 20 pound, but it's gonna stand at the shoulder somewhere around this high, so I'm going 10 inches off the floor. That is, that's under 10 pounds. But not three. Not three, yeah. no, that's why I'm like going, okay. so. Uh, the toy, we have one of these in the store right now. It is on the smaller side of the toy, uh, 10 inches from shoulder to floor. Miniature, what do you think? Is miniature bigger than toy or smaller? No, it's not as bigger. All right, I'm confused. Miniatures are 15 inches, and standards are over 15 inches. That's a pretty big category right yeah, there. Anything is. over 15 inches. In accordance with present-day show classification, there is an array of colors to suit almost anyone's taste. Any solid color is allowed. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Any show color. It was oh, any solid. Color. Yeah, yeah. Any solid. colors allowed. White, black, brown, cafe or blue. Cafe or <laughs> uh, Cream, blue, apricot, red, silver, gray, party colors. Okay. Ooh. What? Party colors are discouraged and disqualified from confirmation competition. So <laughs> party right, colors. Party colors is when there is multiple colors, like spots and stuff like that around the That's uh, disqualified? Yes. What are these snooty rules? And, right. Well, yeah. that's where we diverge. Uh, at Petland, uh, we never claim, and we actually state it explicitly, that we're not sending home puppies that are show dogs, right or yeah. show dog or breeding dogs or anything like that and the reason uh, <laughs> i love party colors i love it when there's spots and all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff um to get away from some of that solid color you know kind of thing. it just is i in my own brain it's it's unique fun. and different but we also have the others as it, well. and you know what <clears throat> i want to just take a quick second and i, I don't want to rail on um you know show people who are in dog shows, you know? uh, but, well, it's, yeah, it's but I, I know, but what I do want to just talk to you briefly about is it is its own world, isn't it? Oh yes. Like reflect on that if you could a little bit, like just your, because uh, that's my impression is that the people who do it, I mean, it is everything to them, right? Right. I have a, a, a friend that uh, breeds labs and I haven't, 
I'll ask you, I haven't spoken with him for many years. And actually before, I didn't, have, I've spoken to him twice since we've owned the store. Mm -hmm. So on that relationship, but I remember going to their house and they were making some, some decent cash. So this is not a poor family or anything like that. Um, is that why some people do this is to, to make money with show dogs or is it more of a hobby? Type thing? He, well, where the money is made for a show breeder is when they're, uh, selling like uh, semen and things like that. Okay. Or when they're breeding the dog and then they're selling those dogs. Okay. Uh, realize, I, okay, so some some interesting things. Realize when, when we <laughs> get an AKC dog, we think that, oh, it's from a show and a, a champion, it's champion bloodlines, thinking that we have that. It has the look of a champion. Mm. Well, that would be incorrect. The reason being is, is people that are breeding for champions, guess which one they take? Champion. Yeah. And they then they sell off the rest of them. And okay. I think that's where modern day breeding and modern day dog ownership really has some, some more recent roots. So canines have been around for thousands of years as mm. companion animals. This isn't anything new. Uh, whether they were outside or inside has actually gone back and forth over the years. 2,000 years ago, they were inside hmm. a lot of the dogs. The hunting dogs were outside, obviously, but they were inside dogs even 2,000 years ago. So that is not something that is more recent. Now, though, AKC, uh, you know, I wrote all these uh uh, breeders that are in that competition, mm -hmm. they need those new champions coming down the line. Well, that's why they breed them. And they breed the best of the best. And now they take the best. <laughs> and you get the others. Well, the others are not show quality. Still beautiful dogs. Beautiful yeah. dogs, great right. companion dogs. We probably would not even see the, the difference. difference. Yeah. Yes. That was, I guess, the last question I want to ask because we do have to move on to some other things. But can they tell as at a puppy, like when when the puppies are born, they can point to the one and they'll know. I yes, I've that's been amazing. with breeders. They all look the same to me. I was like, oh, that's cute. I've <laughs> been with the uh, with AKC people that are judges and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. and we'll look at litters. Uh, out in the field, this is real world. This isn't like staged in some. Right. As we're in the real world. We come across a, a litter of labs, and this uh, AKC is showing this breeder how to pick the best one. Really. And they were going, okay, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I'm like, wow, wow. I never even looked at it that way. It is fascinating it is. to learn somebody's profession like that. Yeah. It's... And the detail that they have. And the track record to prove that they have some, you know, they got good. Things. They know what they're talking. They about. know what they're talking about. Very so yeah, uh, that's at uh, so uh, wonderful family that I know that bred. Uh, those were chocolate labs. Unlike here, when I saw them, I said, "What is that breed?" They looked so different than what I understood oh, that really? was. They're very wide in chest, mm. where I'm used to that real skinny lab. And so then I started understanding that, oh, there's differences there and all these kind of things. So, all right. Well, yeah, that was a cool little talk. I'm, and I'm, and that takes us a little into a world that I don't know if a lot of people know. And I, I've always thought of that when I watch that, you know, very rarely, but like the Westminster stuff, you see them trotting around. And, you know, I, another thing, I, oh, yeah. they purposely wear things that take away from them. From the, uh, right? Yeah, 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 if you've ever like, noticed, yes, they do that yeah, intentionally it's, it's, because they don't want to be the show they want their dog to be exactly. everyone's eyes on the dog so yeah there's times when you're like why is that person running around that yeah yeah and it's because they want to detract from them it's all about the dog baby <laughs> baby all right we all right. are out of time for that a bit but we we're gonna have to probably tighten it up a little bit now uh, but we still have uh finish up on the poodle and then we'll get into the next topic all right well, it's how late what what were we going to i got a time myself here uh, right around the seven or so probably okay so. all right so then uh, the combination oh just finishing up with the poodle then the combination of intelligence a loyal courageous spirited temperament and the appearance of power and elegance has kept the poodle a popular household companion uh, i also will say that they are rated as one of the most intelligent dogs out there learns real fast. I've heard that too. Yeah, a uh, really cool dog as far as that goes. Uh, Non-shedding breed, uh, which is also uh, a nice thing for a lot of people out 
good family dog, and you have uh, at least the time of recording a standard. Yeah, a couple standard uh, poodles. Yeah, we have a standard poodle. We have a miniature poodle that is more along the toy poodle line right now. Okay. So the second thing I wanted, and, and this is uh, where we can tighten it up a little bit, but still have fun with it, is what do we do with our dog in the autumn? Because oh, oh, I'm sorry, Jay, you don't have a dog. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I'm actually, I, when I came across this article, and again, this, this is actually AKC as well talking uh, in the article, is autumn is a time when you kind of go, hey, we can get back outside. It's not too hot. It's not rainy and all that kind of stuff. And so the, just think of this, chase the colors is the title of one of the things that they have. Wouldn't that be fun? Get your dog out and go chase some colors, you know, go into the forest. Uh, let them have some fun. If you, if you have a dog that runs away, keep them on a lead. Don't, don't go too radical there and lose your dog. Um, but getting out there and chasing the colors is awesome. Uh, we do that in our backyard as well. We have a wooded area right behind our house. And so the leaves fall. And so we have fun with the leaves and we're chasing those all over the place and, and having fun. The dogs like to chew on them from time to time and all that. Do a six-legged dash. Mm. So what is, I have noticed uh, this summer and in past summers is when you go to some functions, there's definitely those that say no dogs. And you, okay, I totally respect where they're coming from, you know, kind of a thing. No, though, search, if you are one of those that said, that's not fair, we'll search out one that does allow dogs and go intentionally to that one then. And so they were just talking about marathon runners rely on dogs quite a bit to keep them companion, have companionship while they're doing all their training and everything. And now the marathon organizers are starting to uh, see that or realize it. And they're actually making some marathons uh, pet friendly, dog friendly, so that you have the dog running along with you as well. So it's like a good matchup too. I mean, dogs want to get out and exercise, specifically certain breeds. And so it's a good match for people. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. Uh, this is the season for uh, blessing. Uh, the I am not Catholic. I'm a Lutheran. Uh, but the, uh, the Catholics have a day of blessing for pets. St. Mm -hmm. Francis of Assisi is exactly That's it. my confirmation name. I'm, I am Catholic. So. Oh, there you go. So have you ever yes. gone to oh, any yeah. of this? Oh, I, not, I don't know about this. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's just a nice way to... Uh, you know, it's an extra little blessing for your dog. Sometimes when dogs are... Just, so you bring your dog into the mm -hmm, church itself? Mm -hmm, to the church, yeah. And like so into... Sometimes they'll do it outside. Uh, the times that I've done I'm it, it's been right at... Yeah, yeah, it's been right at the entryway. Okay. But you bring in your dog, you bring your dog to the church, the priest does a special prayer blessing. Uh, and what's nice, I mean, some people bring like dogs that are ill, uh, that type of thing, uh -huh. just a little extra, a little extra help from upstairs. But then, just in general, just to you know, have uh, in St. Francis Assisi, that's where, because I kind of, I, that's why I selected him as my confirmation name because I'm an animal lover and I always have been uh, interested in wildlife. And he was, uh, if you read his story, he was um, has a lot of connections with, with wildlife, and it's uh, he's an interesting character. So. There you go. Yeah, that was never discovered uh, from me. That's yeah, something new that's we pretty cool. And, that's, and when you pick your confirmation name, you want to find someone that has similar light, light something that you aspire to be or you, um, Which you know, have a connection what, with. Right, and so, you were you went into college. Zoology. Right, yeah. zoology. That's right. Yeah, that was my, and then somehow radio guy. I know, right? But you could tell, and I think you can tell that, I'm a, you know, I just love uh, animals, and, and I... I fish, you know, I, I love being in nature and, and I just always have been fascinated by just, I guess, mother nature in general. The fact that, you know, birds can migrate thousands of miles and find the exact same tree. Oh, yeah. The fact that it, there's so many examples of just like, like think about, and I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but think about uh, uh, metamorphosis. Think, think about the fact that a, a, a caterpillar can go, oh, okay. go into, okay. you're, you're like, what are you talking about? about? But think about it. They can go into a, a cocoon and they come out of butter. Right. It's amazing. Oh, yes. Oh, it, life is and amazing. It's just, yeah. Anyway. All right. <laughs> Great book. Got a little deep. Last there. thing okay. up. When Elephants Weep. Read that book. It's really good.
Can we move on? Yes. All right. I, I'll Ele have to check Elephants out Elephants mourn the, the loss of their... I've heard of that, but I haven't read it yet. All right. So so the next thing you can do with your dog, uh, be a bee. A Halloween costume. There you go. I always see the pugs and the uh, bulldogs as bumblebees. Yeah. And there you there go. There he is. There. Uh, that, this is just awesome. At Cutland, we do have our, oh, we're, well, we've got one day left until Halloween. I was going to ask if you got And we have our costumes out. We're blowing this year's costumes out right now. So we actually have them in a bin. It's a blowout. Uh, we're actually getting ready for next year to bring in a full line. And okay. so we wanted to blow out all of ours uh, this year to good zero. Price, good prices on those? Then? Great prices on them. Oh, by Sunday, we're doing percentages off and everything mm -hmm. to, to blow them out. So uh, be a bee, have fun with that. Whatever. Okay, your dog doesn't want to put a costume on. Do something else. Just take a picture and then take it back off. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here, we, here, Callie puts on, we do the hot, she's a dachshund. We put the hot dog <laughs> one thing on her. And she's, she's so cute because she, she's out of it so she's not just to like shrug it off she's kind of sexy as she's coming out of it like <laughs> you, do, you know coming, you're like, like sexy Callie, come on you know, what are you doing that's funny so it's just fun uh catch the great pumpkin there are, uh this again is call ahead but the pumpkin <laughs> patches and stuff are allowing dogs more and more but be respectful call ahead say hey we're just checking it out um and find out if that is right for you all right, so those are a couple of things that you can do this autumn uh, with your dog. I like it. And then finally, real quick, we're going to talk about Nutrisource, which is one of the brands that we have. We have over 40 brands in our store, uh, Petland, Iowa City, uh, at the Marketplace Mall here in Iowa City. Um, and Nutrisource is one of them that we brought in a long time ago because it was just, it's a Midwest uh, brand uh, based out of Minnesota, uh, family owned. A tr here, just a little bit about that. A trusted family-owned pet food manufacturer for over 50 years. It's not something they've just recently done. Uh, we pride ourselves on being a family-owned and operated pet food manufacturer, bringing you high-quality pet foods that you can trust feed and you can trust feeding to your furry family members. Um, they go into uh, just they're a high, a super premium food. Uh, as classified in the industry because of what they um, what they're doing uh, organically and pure and all that kind of stuff. So let's look at Nutrisource as far as the dog food advisor real quick. They they are a four out of five. You almost can't beat that as a rating. It is so difficult to get a five out of five by them. Mm -hmm. To get a four out of five, you are way way up there. And Nutrisource, I will say, is also very economical as far as the brand goes. So high rating, really good price. We got it on that buy 10, get one free on top of that. So we've got a lot of varieties that you can choose from in the store uh, uh, that meet the need of your dog. Oh, my dog likes chicken or whatever it is. We can, we'll have a variety for them. Real quickly, the three top things that people look at on dog food is protein. They're at 29%. That's above average. That's a nice really rounded level of protein uh, above average 18 percent fat which is a nice level for fat dogs need more fat than we do and then the carbs are 45 and what they're trying to show with carbs is is how much of the nutrition is coming from carbs compared to protein that's a nice well balanced product to have uh, 29 percent protein uh, and then 18 on the fat uh, and only 45 on the carbs so it's a nice well-rounded food Good deal. That is Ron Salzard, and this has been the Positively Petland Show on AM800 KXIC. Full show. We talked about a lot, had some fun with it, and I hope you enjoyed it. The Breed of the Week, the Poodle. We had that dog that saved the woman's life from a fire. Two Chihuahuas in studio. Talked about what to do in the autumn, and you just heard about that great food. What was it called again? Nutrisource. Nutrisource. All right. Well, Ron, thanks again. We'll talk to you next time around, all right? Sounds very good. That's Positively Petland Show. Check out Petland of Iowa City. They open up at noon today. If you're listening in on Sunday, most days at 10 o'clock. And they're happy to show you the pups, let you play around with the pups, get them socialized, and meet the needs of both you and the pup. And all the pets. Bye.